Famine has been with us since the dawn of time. It's actually a natural cycle that repeats over and over. Good conditions like rain and fertile soil provide lots of food and population grows quickly. Sexual maturity comes earlier and body weights rise. Fertility goes up and population grows exponentially. Soil gets damaged by overuse. Rains fail from time to time and when they do, the population starves. After the die-off, the land has a chance to recover and rains return. The cycle begins anew. Quite often, the death toll is massive, claiming major fractions of the population. The sheer numbers are staggering. One has to wonder why people go on like this. One reason is the biological imperative, which is to have sex and make babies. That's what we're here for, to reproduce and spread our genes through the ages. Genes are running the show. They don't care, in fact can't care, about the suffering of the individual gene carriers. They just divide and multiply and move on through time. Another reason is, we just don't seem to care much about the long-term future. We are much too involved with the immediate present. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. We don't do that. Nature is unforgiving in the extreme, and the future of any individual species is bleak. 99% of all species that have ever lived are now extinct. They failed to make the cut. Some of them have left us a fossil message in the layers of rock. We were here once, and we'll be seeing you soon. The main difference between past famines and future ones is our technology. Past famines were local affairs, but things are different now. Food is shipped places that cannot grow enough locally. We have whole nations totally dependent on imports. Our world has a lot more people, and we have the weapons at hand to kill everybody. That's new. Think nuclear winter. When people run out of food, other people start to look like unwanted competition for the small amount of food left, which can lead to genocide as in Rwanda and Cambodia. Another thing people start to look like is a source of food. A return to cannibalism is not unusual. This is well documented if you care to look it up. Try the Donner Plenary for a good place to start. Things are not at all hopeless. Please don't get me wrong. If I believe they were, I wouldn't bother to make this video. But do us all a favor, and don't waste any time praying about it. Believing in a god won't help. Almost all the people who have died or are in the process of dying now were and are strong believers, and it isn't helping them to live. To paraphrase an old saying, pray in one hand and shit in the other, and see which fills up first. For those of you who insist on the reality of an imaginary man in the sky, I have a story. Once, there was a great flood coming, and the police were going door to door, urging people to evacuate. One man refused, saying, This is my home, and I'm not leaving. I place my trust in the Lord. He will provide. Well, the flood came, and the waters rose round his house. He ended up on the roof, with the water still rising. Some men in a boat came by to save him, but he still refused, repeating, The Lord will provide. Finally, the house broke free, and he was swept away by the raging torrent. The rain let up, and a helicopter showed up to save him, but he waved them away, shouting, The Lord will save me in my hour of need. Now, alone and cold in the dark, he began to worry. The house was breaking up, and he was about to drown in the raging cold waters. He called out to the Lord, Lord, I put my faith in you. Why have you forsaken me? The Lord answered him, saying, I sent you a police car and a boat, and I even sent you a helicopter. What more do you expect me to do? Magical thinking is doing the same things over and over and always expecting a different result. In life and death situations, this amounts to insanity. Logic and reasoning are useless without facts. We are in deep trouble. We need to face facts and act accordingly. Let's stop having babies so we can have a future. Let's not wait for famine and war to curb the population. That won't be any fun at all. Just ask any Somalian. Get the message out and into the minds of the people who count, the fertile women and the men who get them pregnant. Get the truth into the minds of the people in power, the religious teachers, the political leaders, and the owners of the big corporations. Point out to them that without some self-control, we are all going to die horribly, and all the money and power in the world will be useless and gone. They will die with us. We are all in this together. We can, of course, keep on doing what we've been doing, and the problem will take care of itself. That's right, we don't have to change a thing. Another law of nature is that overpopulation is self-correcting. Explosive growth is always followed by abrupt crash. 
we are no more exempt from this law than the first. When we go the way of the dodo, passenger pigeons, and dinos, the earth will heal and never miss us. The universe doesn't care. I do care, and so I believe should you. Spread the word. Ideas do get around, and who knows? We might just realize we need to hit the brakes before we fly off the overpopulation cliff. If not, c'est la vie. It's been a nice ride while it lasted. To cover my ass, I'll admit I could be totally wrong, at least in the short run. Until the fundamentalists wipe out science, we have hope scientists will find a way to feed more of us. We could double from 7 to 14 to 28 to 56 to 112 to 224 billion in the next 200 years or so. Let's see. That would be 0.224 trillion. That was five doublings. Care to go for five more? We don't have a choice about population growth stopping. It will stop. We do have a choice about when and how it stops. And for those of you who say, I heard this crap back in the 70s and nothing happened. The world is still ticking along just fine. Where is this catastrophe you're talking about anyway? I have this question. Just what qualifies as a catastrophe? Something like a billion people in this world are hungry today. One out of seven people seriously short of food. Right now, thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people are dying of starvation every day in the Horn of Africa. I'm pretty sure from their point of view, it is the end of the world. But please, don't take my word for it. Buy a plane ticket and go see for yourself. Then have a look at some of the data. How much water and oil is left in the ground? How many trees do we have left to cut, etc.? Get some facts, and not just from Fox News. If you want a better picture, listen to the BBC and NPR for a while. Read the book Collapse by Jared Diamond. Watch Al Jazeera and think. And then take some advice from my favorite redneck, Larry the Cable Guy, and get her done.